Good morning friends, we are continuing our discussion on general appreciation of various characteristics of an airplane component, external component, mostly components which are contributing through aerodynamics, right. Yesterday we have discussed, touched upon tail shapes which are historically being used. Uh, there are many types of tail you will see that, but we have discussed only conventional and a T tail. You will find there is a V tail, inverted V tail, H tail, so many things being used. We are not discussing all of these together because this discussion is to give you the basic understanding and other things are just derivative of that and as and when required we will talk about specific configurations. To complete the horizontal tail and vertical tail via some historical number, uh, please have a note on this if I write fighter, sail plane, and let us say others and if I here write horizontal tail, what I am trying to give you some numbers where you will know what is that aspect ratio of tail or lambda of tail or sweep of tail historically being used. So, that gives a good feel for designer. Please understand a chief designer uh, need not understand every aspect of aircraft in detail, but he cannot have an excuse to know the first order effects, otherwise he will not be able to converge into a configuration. It is expected that a chief designer has aerodynamics team, flight mechanics team, control team, structure team. So, they give you the detail analysis and chief designer pick them up or aggregate them, so he needs to have overall idea about what is happening and what is going to happen, how the design evolution have started and where it is going to. That sort of a holistic knowledge a chief designer needs to have. That is why I give some numbers which are again from Raymer. Typically if I write aspect ratio and taper ratio. Typically for fighter it is for horizontal tail it is 3 to 4 and this is 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. These are some guideline numbers based on different types of aircraft in the market. It is not necessary that those numbers are very optimal numbers, right. For a sail plane it is 6 to 10 and 0.3 to 0.5 and others you will find varying between 3 to 5 and 0.3 to 0.6. And if you see the vertical tail, number shows aspect ratio and taper ratio, this is 0.6 to 1.4, 0.2 to 0.4. 1.5 to 2.0, 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 and it could be 1.3 to 2.0 and 0.3 to 0.6. These are typical numbers and what you should notice that aspect ratio of vertical tail is, is much less compared to the aspect ratio of horizontal tail. When it comes to vertical tail, if I am talking about T tail, I'm just putting some number here again, you see this 0 0.7 to 1.2 and 0 0.6 to 1.0, you could see that for T 
detail since there is an end plate effect as I told you this is the vertical tail and there is a horizontal tail here. So, there is an end plate effect effectively it increases the aspect ratio of the vertical tail. Hence, we can afford to have lower geometric aspect ratio and that helps because the moment you make a vertical tail it has to be thicker okay, it has to take the load of horizontal tail. So, if it is low aspect ratio means the weight will go down right. So, all this optimization goes on it may be very delta plus, but you know when you add delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 uh, total delta may be really good worth. So, these numbers uh, you need to have uh, background to start conceptualizing a configuration. There is some salient point when you see the leading edge sweep requirement. One of the point for leading edge sweep is yes it delays the stall. For low speed if you give 10, 15 degrees your understanding is I am trying to delay the stall. Generally you will find leading a sweep is greater than wing sweep that is sweep at C by 4 by roughly 5 degrees that is horizontal tail sweep is 5 degree more rough number more than the leading edge sweep of the wing which is measured at C by 4. Reason is very simple that by giving leading edge sweep to the horizontal tail you are trying to delay the stall. So, you want your tail should stall later than the wing these are all small small additions right. But for high speed if you come for high speed you have added requirement for high speed aircraft you have added requirement of sweep at horizontal tail you want to ensure m critical at tail horizontal tail is greater than m critical of the wing. This is important because if the first point which happened to be on the tail becomes mark 1 shock starts forming the effectiveness will go down drag will increase control power will be affected. So, these are the basic understanding uh, to draw a initial conceptual sketch how much it is all these things should come from thorough analysis through CFD or primarily validated through wind tunnel testing. Okay. If we try to visualize similar thing for a vertical tail, there is no requirement of again any sweep the vertical tail when it is low speed. We will find mostly around 15 to 20 degrees sweep will be there for a vertical tail uh, which is primarily for aesthetic reasons, but for high speed. Again this criteria m critical vertical tail should be greater than m critical wing. So, that demands uh, that has resulted in vertical fin sweep order of around maybe 35 to 55 degrees in general. So, when you see a configuration these are the guidelines you ask yourself am I designing a low speed high speed what sort of stall characteristic of the wing. So, we can pick those numbers and draw the initial sketch right. Another part we will see that as far as thickness ratio is concerned typically tail thickness be 10 percent roughly 10 percent lesser than wing T by C 
I'm talking about T by C, right? So, T will, T by C will be 10 percent thinner as compared to T by C of wing, general filling, right? But not the maximum thickness, because maximum thickness depends upon what is the cord. I'm talking about T by C, right? And mostly this uh, uh, horizontal tail, they will be symmetrical of one, right? Again, you can uh, debate it out that T by C is for a tail, horizontal is thinner. This is guided by the understanding that we want M critical of the horizontal tail to be more than M critical of the wing. Because we know if I make the arrow foil thicker and thicker, M critical will reduce, right? So, all those things are converged here. And I thought I will share this number with you. Yesterday, we were discussing something on very interesting thing and the difference between good designer and the average designer lies on the fact that a good designer knows how to configure his airplane to handle eventualities, the critical points, worst point in the flight stall is one of those, high side slip is one of those conditions. For normal conditions, two airplane may look similar, but the moment you try to check them, what is his performance during high side slip or high angle of attack, immediately you will find, oh my god, these two are different. So what the designers will do without much affecting the weight or much change in the configurations, right? That is important and that is where a designer role play, an important role, very, very important role. So, in that direction, we discussed something about dorsal fin. How this dorsal fin concept came? We were talking about, are you sure we have designed our vertical tail and horizontal tail comfortably enough to avoid degradation of rudder power or vertical tail, tail effectiveness during spin. Spin means huge vertical component and rotation. So, wing has stalled, you have only vertical tail and rudder to take care of the spin part because you have to come out of the spin. You need a rolling moment, you need a yawing moment. So, you have to ensure that your vertical tail and rudder are effective even at high stall conditions. We started like that and then we said a simple guideline again based on Raymer, it was most of artistic guideline so that if I draw my vertical tail like this and this is the rudder and if I put horizontal tail here and I draw 60 degree. and draw here 30 degrees. So, this is the situation when the airplane is at high angle of attack, it has come near the stall or already in the stall. So, if you draw like this, you see the whole rudder and vertical fin, they are coming in the wake created by, by horizontal tail. This should be avoided, then your rudder is not effectively available to apply rolling or yawing moment. So, what is suggested is you find out a configuration, you try to see the location of let us say this is vertical tail and you put the horizontal tail little ahead and draw 60 degree as required here, draw 30 as here and perhaps It is a 30 degrees this, not to scale of course. So, what is the message is you locate the horizontal tail and vertical tail in such a manner. So, when I draw 60 and 30 here, I have larger area which is out of the wake created by horizontal tail. So, if this is a diagram which is not to scale, so you, you know this much portion is available 
from the rudder to be effective. Generally, if 70% is available, you are happy about it. Okay? And with this understanding, if we now see a detail, detail means the one is here, another detail could be mid detail. If this is the vertical tail, and I put detail here. It is location of detail is different. This is at the top, conventional detail. I can put a detail here as well. Now you could see here, here, if I draw 60 degree here and 30 degree here, my rudder and vertical tail, they are out of the wake because of horizontal tail. So it is very, very effective as far as influence because of horizontal tail is concerned. But do not forget, when I am talking about T tail, it should not come into the wake created by wing. We are here talking about horizontal tail. It should not happen already the apple is tall because of wing this gentleman has come into, a, into the wake of the wing. So all these things you have to test analytically, computationally, a finally through wind tunnel test. Right? You generate data. Similarly here if it is mid wing you could see if radar is something like this. Then here and here if I draw this much portion is available which is not part of the wake because of oriental tail. Please understand this when I am talking about I am avoiding the rudder to come inside the wake created by horizontal tail. This is fine, good when you are talking about horizontal relative location. But when I am trying to justify for T tail, yes it is indeed if it is a T tail rudder will not be affected by T tail wake. But you should not forget there is a wake coming because of wing. That this gentleman may be very, very ineffective. There may be pitch up tendencies. But rudder will be effective. That is more important. And when I am talking about stall or spin, when the aileron is not at all effective, I want rolling moment, I want yawing moment, I am more concerned about rudder power, rudder effectiveness, vertical tail effectiveness. That is why this is generally at conceptual level if you do like this, uh, you are actually hinting towards that, you are preparing yourself so that design is has an initial beginning for a good spin recovery characteristics, good spinning recovery characteristics. That is important, so at conceptual stage you should know where do I locate my horizontal tail, how far vertical tail and what x location vertical tail. That is why I am sharing this and repeating this today. Right? I started with dorsal fin. Right? So, we will come to dorsal fin here. Remember dorsal fin or ventral or and ventral fin, two types of strikes we discussed yesterday. Uh, this was dorsal. I am repeating those things with more little more detail. Dorsal fin. I will some time we will talk about ventral fin also. Because if you see an aircraft, you will find these things are there. When yesterday I was discussing about dorsal fin, I gave a statement this dorsal or ventral, they are basically strikes. And strikes are regularly used. They are used in fuselage to create vortex, which helps in attaching the flow, gives more energy to the flow via vortex. So, whether dorsal fin or a ventral fin, they are all actually strex. They have properties characterized by strex properties. That means, they are basically vortex generator. That is important. For example, if you see our Piper Saratoga airplane, in the leading edge, some part you will find, if I draw the leading edge, for some part, not all through, some part, there is a wedge install at the leading edge, which are like leading edge strikes. What is the advantage of it? If this airplane is supposed to stall at 12 degrees, this is alpha 12 degree, if I put a strike here, this stalling will alpha stall 
may become 15 degrees because the vortex it is generated the vortex which carries energy and gives energy to, to the fluid so it delays later so that is leading edge stress now when i am talking about this sort of a lateral characteristics may be stall spin the best way to see that our radar and vertical tail is effective is to supply this area with some vortex right so that its effectiveness increases if it is stalling at side slip angle of 12 degree let it stall at 15 degrees so i should generate some vortex which should impinge on the vertical fin and energize it and delay the stall that is the philosophy and in that philosophy you will find if this is vertical fin and this is the strex so this is strex which is typically known as dorsal fin you will see its further effect i'll discuss and if i try to give some historical description of dorsal fin being used types of dorsal fin being used as i was telling this dorsal fin they are basically strex which creates vortices or vortex which impinges on the vertical fin especially when beta is high is at 10 or 15 degrees 12 degrees when an airplane is doing huge side slip right that is the time where at that side slip angle the vertical tail may become very very ineffective because it is nearing stall so that time this gentleman dorsal fin will generate vortex will get impinged on the vertical fin and delay the stall so the vertical fin effectiveness will increase and hence rudder effectiveness also will increase so what leading edge strike was doing for piper saratoga dorsal fin is doing the same thing but for lateral direction lateral stability directional stability okay so when i talk about directional or lateral stability more important importantly lateral stability i talk about beta that is c and beta should be greater than 0 if an airplane is directionally stable and if i show you typical plot this is no dorsal fin dorsal fin and if you put a dorsal fin generally it will be it is with dorsal fin so if you see this angle could be around 12 degree so this gentleman goes up to 15 18 degrees depending upon how you have designed the dorsal fin depending upon how effective is your dorsal fin in terms of what is this length what is this angle what sort of shape it will decide what sort of help it is making in delaying the stall on the vertical fin when the airplane is going in a high side slip right yes it will need increase drag but please understand these are the situation during high side slip which is emergency situation you need to ensure that your vertical tail and rudder is effective so the, this dorsal fin plays an important role and they do not make much difference when the beta is small whether dorsal is there or not there see beta is small it doesn't make much of difference they are uh, important when the airplane is flying at a high side slip angle right if you see this sort of a uh, uh, concept being used in fokker f70 you will find if you see do the google search you will find rigorous use not in most of the airplane they are doing using dorsal fin like this there are some sort of called rounded dorsal fin so basically if this is dorsal fin itself is 
part of it, right? Here it has been rounded like this, right? And extended. And there are also dorsal fin, dorsal fin extended. All this concept, please understand, this is what the designers have the liberty. The concept is you have to somehow generate vortex, vortex here which gets attached to the vertical surface and delays the stall. But designer will see, okay, I do that, but it should not unnecessarily increase the drag. So there this tweaking goes on, okay. And extended means what will what we'll see is that yes, there is some sort of a uh, here. There instead of rounding it here, it is tended a little bit of thickness. Okay. So this is extended. rounded here and normal like this. So, little thickness continues for a long, longer length rounded and then merges with the sweep of the vertical tail. So, all these concepts are used as dorsal fin. Primary reason is to ensure that high at high side slip angle you should be able to generate vertex which should help in delay in the vertical tail stall. Right. I am just continuing the advantage of dorsal fin or how dorsal fin have been used. Uh, you know, is something called rudder lock phenomenon. At some point of time, it was really a serious challenge when airplane is to be flown with less actuators or other mechanisms. You have been exposed to the concept of floating tendency, tendency of, of elevator, right, for a conventional reversible airplane. This concept I am talking about mostly on reversible type of airplane that is you pull the stick, elevator goes up or down, you put elevator up and down, the stick will go forward or backward. So, this is reversible. Nowadays, it is not reversible, they are actuated, etcetera. So, scenarios are different, but the fundamental issue must understand what was floating tendency of an elevator if this is the horizontal tail and this is the elevator hinge line, right? If there is an angle of attack alpha, so you can say that there is a pressure distribution over it, and the aerodynamic center or center of pressure over the elevator is here. So it will try to float this gentleman elevator up, but as it goes up, resisted by the forces experienced here, and there is an equilibrium, right? We explain that. CH non dimensional hinge moment coefficient can be expressed as CH alpha into alpha plus CH delta E into delta E. Of course, we assume CH naught 0. So, delta E float can be easily modeled as minus CH alpha into alpha by CH delta E. And we know that this man is negative, this man is negative. So, for a positive alpha elevator will be negative, floating elevator will be negative. It will automatically float because over the ele uh, elevator the pressure distribution will be such if the center of pressure of the pressure distribution is behind hinge line, it will try to float it up with alpha. So, message was if you really want to trim an airplane for a particular alpha, C m versus alpha graph will tell you how much alpha is required to trim the airplane such a lift equal to weight. How do you get that alpha? You want to pitch up. So, use elevator and pitch it up, but because it is a floating tendency reversible airplane, 
the aircraft automatically will float by this much. Now imagine, suppose your delta is required to maintain the airplane at a particular trim. Uh, if you see this uh, diagram, delta E versus CL, diagram something like this. Suppose you are flying at, you want to fly at this CL, so it tells you, I need this much of delta E. So you have to pull the stick to get that much of delta E, elevator deflection. But imagine a situation, you have designed the elevator such a way that the values of CH alpha and CH delta E is such that without doing anything at that alpha automatically it floats to this point. Or when you try to take it to that alpha, it further gets floated by this angle. Both the things are possible, right? In a dynamic sense, at any alpha, there will be a floating tendency unless you lock it. So actual effort put by the pilot will not be or dictated by the absolute delta. You have to take consideration of how much elevator has floated. That is the understanding. Similarly, if you see for a rudder floating, again for reversible rudder float, which is happening at longitudinal, it will happen at directional also. So, so in that case, I say C H delta R into delta R plus C H beta into beta will be equal to 0. Right? For example, this is your rudder, this part. I, I just, so this is the hinge line. As there is a beta coming like this, there is a pressure distribution over it. And let us say center of pressure of this pressure distribution, when the beta is positive like this, will be behind the hinge line, then that will give a force towards me, which will give me a yawing moment about the hinge line, nose going towards right. Is this clear? Again, you see, if this is the rudder, if there is a beta like this, there will be pressure distribution here. And if that point is behind the hinge line, which is indeed, it will give a yawing moment going towards right. So the CH beta will be positive, and CH delta R equals similar check will be negative. The hinge moment because of beta and delta R. So delta R float means what is that value of delta R, delta R float where C H equal to 0. So, this is actually equal to C H. 0 means it is floating. So, I put 0 here. So, that will be minus C H beta into beta by C H delta R. And you know C H beta is positive, C H delta is automatically negative. So, delta R float will be for a positive beta, delta R float will be negative. See, negative and this is C H beta is positive, so negative, positive, negative and this is negative, positive. So, delta R will become positive. Yes, so beta positive means delta R positive. What is the meaning of that? If you want to fly at a beta, let us say, if you want to fly the airplane at beta, say I want to fly the airplane at beta, then I must ensure that C n beta into beta, this is the yawing moment coming because the airplane is directionally statically stable. That has to be corrected by C n delta r into delta, that should be equal to 0. So, delta r required will be minus C n beta of the aircraft into beta by C n delta r of the aircraft. This you know like crosswind landing. But delta R float is giving me this. So, for a positive beta, delta R is positive. But here you see, C n beta is positive, C n delta R is negative. So, for a positive beta, negative, positive, negative, positive, again delta R is positive. So, I want delta R positive some value, but by float, already it is having some positive values. So, what is the problem? See the issue what will happen. That let us say this is delta required, which is coming from this equation. 
for given beta right and delta r float this is delta r float what happens at high angle of beta delta r float becomes very very sharp why it becomes very sharp you can understand the point here where delta required and delta float they converge so pilot cannot feel anything and beyond that delta float float will be always higher than delta required so pilot will not be able to do anything he has to do something reverse all this time delta required was more than delta float so he will be using the pedal ok but after this point the sign changes so this point we call rudder lock the pilot is not able to handle it unless he does the thing reverse way now which is a typical stall characteristics what happens as increase beta this delta float increases abruptly what is the physics behind it or some understanding behind it that rudder lock will happen when c n beta of the vertical tail reduces and c n delta r of vertical tail increases or increase or strong that is whenever loosely you understand that rudder lock will happen when c n beta has gone down has gone down means its directional stability has gone down but control power rudder control power is high that is where when you say like that this is one and this is this at high beta this problem of rudder lock will come if you see delta float right this is cn beta by ch delta ch beta this is not ch ch beta okay by ch delta r when i say cn beta has gone, gone down means what let us see this statement carefully if i am trying to trim at beta then i know cn beta into beta the cn delta r into delta r has to be zero so delta r required will be minus cn beta by c n delta r into delta r uh, into de into beta sorry into beta so now if c n beta has relatively gone down that means delta requirement will be less delta required will be less relatively if you see c n beta has gone down why c n beta has gone down because vertical tail is stalling the effect is going down so delta required will also go down but delta float will not change that much so delta float will float fast so it will cross this point it will come to this point that is where rudder lock phenomena likely to happen so what is done if this is the culprit the cn beta is going down why it is going down because vertical tail is nearing stall so what do you do again you say oh dorsal fin it help us the dorsal fin the presence of dorsal fin create vortex at in delays the stall of the vertical tail and hence the cn beta doesn't drop and you still can operate somewhere here avoid this point or this point this is a very fast explanation you must read this is a very complex phenomena uh, easy to say the beta float increases beyond a degree aerodynamics no more linear it's non linear but this is the this is the general physics and this has a context that as long as you understand rudder lock will happen when cn beta goes down on cn delta r rudder lock will happen when cn beta has gone down 
and directional stability has gone down and control power is high. So, to avoid rudder lock, you ensure CNB does not go down. So, ensure the delay at high side slip angle, the delay is there, delay in the stall angle is there. You increase the stall angle during high side slip of the vertical tail, ensuring CN beta does not drop and that can be done through dorsal fin, one of the another advantage of having dorsal fin. If you find some difficulty in uh, rudder lock, we will take, again we will come back to this. This is my way of teaching, I introduce a concept and you are supposed to read, I come to the forum and I also see the videos, if I find no, I need to talk more on this, then I come back again. But since our discussion is on design, I am not, I am avoiding to go into all this equation at this stage, right. But still, these are unavoidable because you understand these equations. Like dorsal fin, there is something called ventral fin. After dorsal, you know, ventral is also doing the same thing. You will find this is the fuselage, that is vertical in this, the dorsal fin. There is some location here. This is also a streak, they also generate, they call ventral fin, they also generate vortex which impinges on vertical fin to delay the stall or make it more effective. This is indirectly helping the directional stability of the airplane also at high side slip angle, because this gentleman this one, this one will generate this vortex at high side slip angle. At high side slip angle, there is a decay in the vertical tail effectiveness because it is nearing stall. So, generation of vortex from here and here that enhances the vertical tail effectiveness in terms of delaying the stall and also increasing the dynamic characteristics. So, many places where only dorsal fin is not that effective, people may put uh, ventral fin. The advantage is at high angle of attack, this ventral fin does not get blanketed because of wing wake. Yes, you are talking about side sleeve, high angle. So, at high angle of attack, dorsal fin and this may get blanketed, but dorsal fin will not get blanketed. So, you add that also. Okay. This is important, right. And that is where the designer takes a call depending upon type of situation he is flying, type of speed he is doing. He will select dorsal fin or ventral fin, both or one of these. Mostly you will find dorsal fin will be a mandatory, ventral fin depending upon what sort of a speed range, what sort of angle of attack maneuver, all this decide these combinations. Right? But you should know fundamentally what are the role of these, what is expected of these. Right? A lot of research paper on dorsal fin and ventral fin, you can google it and see how aerodynamic characteristics changes. Right? Thank you for today, we will come back with a new area now, a new topic that most probably it will be thrust loading and wing loading. Okay. Thank you very much.